Advanced Accounting 17 Intercompany Inventory Transaction. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. This information was taken from the Advanced Accounting Text Chapter 7 of McGraw-Hill. And a related video is Cost Accounting 6 Equivalent Units where we talk about raw materials, working process, and the inventory, which I think would help. We've talked about um, transactions of land and other, and then also depreciable assets between a parent and a subsidiary. Now we're going to talk about inventory. And before we do that, let's talk about the flow of transactions. We have raw material, work in process, and inventory that are all assets. You can imagine those pairs of jeans sitting on the factory floor. And we've gone through that illustration before. Once the inventory is sold, we debit cost of goods sold, which is an expense, and we credit to reduce inventory. We also debit cash or a receivable, an asset. We debit and then we credit revenue. So the revenue less the cost of the goods sold is our profit. That's our basic flow of inventory transactions. Well, what if we sell from one parent to a sub or the reverse? In consolidation, we need to make sure that the inventory remains at the original cost of the first purchaser, the person who originally bought it. And also that once we sell that inventory to a third party outside the company, we then recognize cost of goods sold. And I refer you again to cost accounting six. In consolidation, we're going to have elimination entries where we reverse the entries that we saw on the prior page. We're going to put the inventory back on the books and reduce cost of goods sold by crediting. We're going to reduce revenue by debiting and reduce cash or the receivable. I'm going to jump over to Excel before I go any further. Let's assume that Levi's buys inventory for $7,000. They subsequently, Levi's, sell the inventory to Hollywood Jeans for $10,000. So Levi's, is in March, is going to buy inventory for $7,000 and pay cash. April 1st, they're going to sell the inventory to Hollywood. So they're going to recognize cost of sales for the same $7,000, and they're going to reduce inventory by $7,000. And then to record the cash that came in the door from Hollywood of $10,000, and we have sale of revenue account by crediting $10,000, that's going to be Levi's entries for the inventory transaction. Hollywood, on the other hand, is going to, on April 1st, record inventory for the higher amount of $10,000, and they pay cash. So that's a simple downstream sale, Levi apparent, Hollywood as such. Well, what if Hollywood resells the inventory in the same year for more than the 10000 that they paid? Similar transaction. Hollywood's going to buy inventory and pay cash. Then on November 5th, when they sell the inventory, they're going to recognize cost of goods sold and reduce the inventory. And they're going to recognize 15000 in cash in a sale. But we need an elimination entry because the transaction from Levi to Hollywood really doesn't matter. The transaction that matters is the original inventory cost to the entire organization of 7000 and the 15000 they got when they sold it to a third party. So what we need to do as an elimination entry is reduce sales by 10000 reduce cost of sales by 10000 And let's look at the T accounts. The T accounts tie to the journal entries above. Levi sold 10000 to Hollywood. Then Hollywood sold for 15000 to a third party. And what we're doing in the elimination entry is eliminating that Levi sale to Hollywood. So we end up with a sale of 15000 which is the sale to the third party. As far as cost of sales, Levi's had cost of sales of 7000 then Hollywood had cost of sales of 10000 when they sold it to the third party, but we're going to eliminate that entry by crediting. So we end up with a cost of sales and consolidation of 7000 which was, as an organization, the first 
original cost for that inventory at the very beginning. So we have a profit of 15000 less 7000 which is correct company-wide. One more little wrinkle here is, well, what if the sale to the third party doesn't happen until the following year? Let's think about that. We're going to have Levi's sale to Hollywood. We're going to record a sale there and an elimination entry. So our sales in consolidation is zero at the end of the year because we haven't sold it to a third party yet. We have cost of sales from Levi to Hollywood. We're going to do an elimination entry. Again, cost of sales on a consolidated basis is zero because we haven't sold the inventory to an outside person. We're still waiting on that. November 5th of the next year, Hollywood sells the inventory to Old Navy, somebody outside the company. These entries we've seen before. This is the cost of goods sold for 7000 which is Levi's original cost right here. Cost of sales and inventory at the original inventory cost. We get cash in the door of 15000 and sales of 15000 when we sell it to the third party up here. Same as the prior page. So our profit is the same. The difference is, is that this sale happens in the following year and what remains at the end of 1231x1 is we have no sale yet we have no cost of sale yet and we have inventory at the end of that year sitting on the books at seven thousand dollars so what's happened is this seven thousand dollars is still sitting there as an asset in inventory when we get to the end of the year we have no sale and no cost of sale yet and those things happen in the year X2 rather than X1. And we end up with the same profit that happens to be in year X2, not X1. So our elimination entry right here to tie it to the T accounts, there's the sale elimination to reduce the sales to zero. Here's the cost of goods sold elimination. It's a credit which reduces cost of sales, brings cost of sales to zero. Our inventory gets reduced by 3000 which gets our inventory down to the $7,000, which was the original cost for Levi's. So Levi's buys inventory, we debit to increase. Levi sells it to Hollywood, we credit to decrease. Hollywood purchases it for 10 and then to get to our $7,000 ending balance, we need a $3,000 elimination entry, which is where we get this number here. So this is our elimination entry. And the explanation is to eliminate the intercompany downstream sale of inventory because we haven't sold the inventory yet. Wrapping up in Excel, a downstream sale is defined as parent to subsidiary. And the sale, recognizing the sale is deferred until it, it's sold to a third party. Upstream sales the other direction from the subsidiary, in my example, Hollywood, to a parent. The elimination entries differ only, the only large difference is, is that on the upstream sale we allocate the profit between the controlling and the non-controlling interest. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 17. We have our hour-long essential topics courses that you can access not only with management accounting, but financial costs and other courses, intermediate. Here's our YouTube channel, Kemboid STL, all one word, for one-on-one -on -one tutoring in small groups using gotomeeting.com. Here's our website, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.